the KK Matheny-led Seattle Mist come into the Mile High City to battle the Denver Dream next. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the f get out of her. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your butt on their throat. LFL football has arrived to the Mile High City. Welcome inside the booth of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. We're at the Budweiser Event Center. And if you're a fan of the Denver Dream, it may be a long night for you. You get to face the Seattle Mist, a perennial favorite to represent the Western Conference in the Legends Cup. A tough task for this Denver Dream team. The upside is Denver's playing at home. The downside is they're playing one of the strongest teams in the league, the Seattle Mist. They have weapons across the board. I can't speak about them all, but I really like the way Jade Randall's playing. Last year, she won the league MVP. She's playing back at that level. And Stevie the Bull Schnorr, right now the most consistent running back in the LFL and the leader in that locker room. On the Denver side of the ball, it's been no secret, folks. This team has lost by an average of nearly 100 points. When that happens, the blame usually goes to the head coach, in this case, Carlos Bates. Many LFL experts expect him to get fired as early as Black Monday, which is the Monday following the Legends Cup. Now, the counter argument to that, Bobby Huco, is if he's managed to keep this team together despite those really horrific losses, is that enough for him to hold on to this job? I'm not sure. In his first two games, gave up 100 points in each game. That's just incredible. Right now, the offensive scheme's really not there. He hired some marginal assistant coaches. I'm not sure he can hold that job. Now, the news gets worse for Denver, believe it or not. Their starting quarterback, Shailene Canfield, who was slated to be the starter tonight, apparently out of this game, get this, due to an anxiety attack. Unbelievable. That's going to put the game on the shoulders of Mary Towner. Her first start, not good news for Denver. Denver has its work cut out for itself. Can the dream shock the world, or will Seattle dominate? Say it with me. Kickoff is next. Back to LFL football night inside a rocking Budweiser event center. Mitch Mortaz and Bobby Huco on the call. Denver will get us underway with Mary Towner kicking off. Looking forward to seeing Seattle, one of the top teams in the LFL, playing Denver with five new players. Let's see if they can compete. That is Jessica Hopkins struggling with the return here. We'll bring it out. And Hopkins laying the wood to the Denver defender. So Seattle taking over at about the 17-yard line. Great coverage by that kickoff team for Denver, holding Hopkins to only 12 yards on the return. So Seattle does take over at the 17-yard line. K.K. Matheny and the number one ranked offense will lead the way as we take a look at Matheny's numbers in 2017. The poignant one there being Bobby is zero interceptions and seven touchdown tosses. She's playing solid football at quarterback. Coach Chris Michaels said he's going to mix it up tonight. We'll see. They are mixing it up. That is a backward lateral to Angel. Now finding Matheny. Matheny putting on the moves. Cutting back to the inside. Look at Mighty Mouse go. And Matheny, a 16-yard completion from Michelle Angel. Seattle lined up in a stack trip set. Angel had Randall deep, but came back to the quarterback, K.K. Matheny. And she's a great athlete, kind of a gym rat. She can do anything for the team. What a run, shoddy tackling by Denver. When K.K. Matheny is tearing up 16 yards, your defense is struggling. This is Stevie Schnorr. And speaking of poor tackling, touchdown Seattle. Wow, second play of the game. She might have 300 yards if that's the way Denver's going to tackle tonight. Two plays in a row, really bad tackling. A 17-yard run by Stevie Schnorr. Denver struggling tackling, and you got to imagine it's going to be tougher with a big power back like Schnorr. You have to lay into her. Nobody on this defense wanted any part of Stevie Schnorr. Look at that. She's 10 yards, 10, 15 yards down the field before anybody lays a hand on her. Here we go again. Denver's defense looked terrible. This is what we called the Olay defense when I was in high school. We didn't tackle anybody. 
terrible start for Denver and head coach Carlos Bates. He told me before the game he had five new players who were going to really help this defense. And that's Jade Randall. We talked about her fitting into the culture of Seattle. Coming from Dallas to Seattle, I really had to recognize my new role on this team because it was obviously different than when I was playing in Dallas. And the, the coaching style is way different as well. Um, but the Seattle teammates that we have now have welcomed us with open arms, and we really feel like we're a family and a good team. We spoke about it in pregame. Jade Randall off to a great start. She's playing back the way she did in 2016 when she won the MVP award in the LFL. That's an interesting development. Shalyn Canfield is in at quarterback, handing off to Amber Smith, one of the recent pickups. A little shuffling around on the offense. Let's meet the starters. Sasha Cruz, center. Lindsey Q, wide receiver. Mary Towner, tight end. Stacey Harmon, tight end. Jasmine Davies, wide receiver. Amber Smith, running back. Jalen Canfield, quarterback. We'll see if Canfield has developed a quarterback. She had a coach come in over the last three weeks and really helped her out with her techniques at the quarterback position. That's Jade Randall wreaking hell here early in the game. That was a three-yard loss, another tackle of Amber Smith. This Denver offense, the worst in the LFL, ranked number eight, is going backwards. Coach Carlos Bates, he brought in Amber Smith. He had an open tryout. She's a great athlete. He really thinks she's going to have a lot of success tonight. A third and 17 deflected by Stevie Schnorr, intended for Lindsey Fields as we meet Seattle's defense. LaShonda Fowler, cornerback. Jessica Hopkins, corner. Stevie Schnorr, safety. Michelle Angel, safety. Danielle Hawkins, linebacker. Jade Randall, defensive end. Katie Whalen, defensive end. Look for that Seattle defense to muddle up so Canfield cannot read coverages. That is a fourth and 17 interception. Michelle Angel taking it to the house. Touchdown, Seattle. Just like that, they confused the coverage. Angel came out of nowhere. Canfield threw it right at her, and she's a great defensive, offensive player. Watch this. She intercepts the ball and then turns it into six. Michelle Angel, the backup quarterback, starting safety. What a start for Seattle. And what a luxury for Seattle to have a premier backup quarterback, Michelle Angel, that also happens to be potentially an all-fantasy safety. The whole entire team is so talented as athletes. You look at Jade Randall. She was player of the year last year, but she plays outstanding defense. Here's Michelle Angel. You think of her as a quarterback, she takes it in for six on an interception. Now the two-point attempt, a dribbler back to Matheny, finding LaShonda Fowler. Make that Dominique Malloy. The two-point conversion is good. Seattle leading it 15 to nothing. KK fumbles the snap, but one-on-one -on -one coverage outside with Dominique Malloy. They had her covered inside. She turned it out. What a start for Seattle. This offense is on target. We haven't even played five minutes into the first quarter, and you are already seeing the Denver team we've seen all season long struggling on both sides of the ball. And there it is. That looks like Mary Towner is now in at quarterback. We thought that was going to happen. Towner is probably a better athlete. She has a good arm. She's raw at quarterback. She hasn't had a lot of practice, but she is a good athlete. A first and 10 ball at the Denver 15. Towner in the shotgun, fakes the handoff to Smith, rolling right, taking about a year to get to the outside. Not one of the faster quarterbacks in the LFL. That'll be a loss. Or make that no gain, and we do have a penalty. This play was designed for Canfield, a quarterback. A spread option. She fakes inside, takes it outside. Now, Mary Towner doesn't have those kind of wheels to get outside, obviously, and she gets stopped short. Holding. Offense number 17. That penalty is declined. Second down. That's an interesting development. Seattle electing to decline the penalty. That would have backed Denver up a bit. They don't think that Denver has any talent on offense that can move the ball uh, even a little bit. Look at that lineup right there. There's nobody deep in the secondary. That's a second and 10. What an aggressive play by Katie Whelan. Whelan taking a year off and back in a big way. This is why they didn't accept that penalty. Denver's offense has showed nothing all year long. They can't even take a snap right there. The safeties for Seattle are up on the line of scrimmage. They are not scared one bit. 
about this Denver offense. Denver continuing to go backwards offensively. Now a third and 16 ball backed up at their own nine yard line. If they don't convert here and they're inside their 10 yard line, they do have the option of punting it and trying to switch up field position a bit. That might be a smart move actually. A third and 16 heavy rush off the edge. And that falls incomplete intended for Isaiah Walker. So Towner feeling the heat early in this one. They had a Cat Cobra blitz on the backside corner coming in. Nobody picked him up. There's no audible. Right now, Denver looks lost. She took a shot right there. Luckily, she delivered the ball incomplete, but at least they didn't take a sack. Now, here's an opportunity, fourth and 16. You're backed up in your own nine-yard line. You got to punt the ball here. You would think any smart coaching staff would punt the ball here. Fourth and 16, deep in your territory. They're not, though. Handoff to Amber Smith, and Smith is lost. And speaking of losses, she did lose a yard as Seattle taking over at the eight of Denver. What kind of play selection was that? Fourth and 16, and you hand the ball inside where you have no running game going at all. You have to throw the ball. They're handing it right back to Seattle. And that'll lead us to our first media timeout with 517 remaining. It has been all Seattle early. Back to LFL football night in Denver, Colorado. Seattle on offense, let's meet the starters. Stevie Schnorr, running back. Jade Randall, wide receiver. Dominique Malloy, running back. Shay Norton, tight end. LaShonda Fowler, tight end. Nicole Peterson, your center. Hagan Matheny, quarterback. To tell you how much Coach Michelson thinks of this Denver defense, he is hoping that KK Matheny only plays one quarter tonight. Pass intended for Randall. Matheny and Randall trying to get on the same page. We asked Matheny about it. I would say that my chemistry with Jade Randall is, is great. Uh, you know, what we have on and off the field now, you know, has, has changed tremendously. It takes a little bit of time to learn a new system as, a, as a complex as ours. And, you know, she's done a great job and I'm very comfortable with her now. That's what Chris Michelson wants to work on between these two tonight, the mesh between quarterback and receiver. They haven't played together that much so far, but they're gonna work on the connection tonight. A second and goal ball at the Denver eight. From the shotgun, Matheny just lobbing it over the middle. Nobody covering LaShonda Fowler as she walks into the end zone for the third touchdown for Seattle tonight. K.K. Matheny pulls the secondary away by looking right, then coming back left. Nobody on Fowler for an easy touchdown again for Seattle. Carlos, base head coach of Denver Dream, as we talked about in the pregame show, barely holding on to this job and not a great start here tonight. Sometimes confidence is a mask for fear. He really thought they had a chance to beat Seattle, but they're not showing anything so far. Beat Seattle? When, when did he say that? In our pregame talks, he really thought bringing these five new players in and the development at Canfield, at quarterback, he had a shot at beating these guys. I want to smoke whatever they're smoking here in Denver. And it is legal here, it's by legal the way. It's legal now. I checked. That extra point attempt by Stevie Schnorr is good. Seattle extending its lead now to 22 to nothing. And Towner apparently will stay in at quarterback. Interesting because all we could speak about before the game was Canfield. Then we heard that story that she had a little breakdown before the game and she wasn't going to start, but then Canfield started and now she's out. Something happened that we don't know about. A first and 10 ball at the Denver 15. Let's see if they fare any better offensively. Towner with a big drop and this time completing it to Lindsey Fields. Towner has some talent. You can see where the footwork, she needs to work on that. She could have stepped up in the pocket. She went backwards instead of forward, but with that strong arm, still completed the pass. Put it this way, Towner had such a deep drop that the completion was at the line of scrimmage. It looked like about a 10-yard gain. That was a no-gain play. A no-gain, but you know how hard that pass was? I mean, that, she could have made that so much easier with footwork. Second and 10, ball remains at the 15. It looked like Denver may have jumped. That was miscommunication with Amber Smith and Towner paying the price. Randall all over the field early, a loss of five. It looked like they're trying that spread option, but Smith didn't look for the football. There was no blocking at all, just a terrible play again for Denver. Do you think Randall got the memo about her league MVP status in 2016 and being a dud early in this season? 
I think she's playing outstanding football on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. Look at Chris Michelson. I have never seen him so relaxed. Yeah, I think he took some of that uh, Denver juice we talked about earlier because I've never seen him that calm on the sidelines. A third and 15 over the middle, almost intercepted. That was Michelle Angel dropping a sure interception. Angel could have taken this to the house. Watch this. She threw it right at Angel. I don't know how she dropped that. That should have been another six points for Seattle, but there's no rhyme or reason to this passing game for Denver. They're just throwing the ball up. There's no chance that ball had of being complete. Michelle Angel tied with the league league in interceptions and almost had one there again. A fourth and 16 ball at the Denver 11-yard line. Towner remains in at quarterback, dropping back and throwing down the field a good arm. Pass intended for Isaiah Walker. And we saw Towner's arm strength there. Hey, tell Lala she's got to open up and turn. These motherfuckers don't turn and watch the ball. She's got to watch that ball. Coach Michelson telling the DBs to open their hips and look at the quarterback. Isaiah Walker should have had that pass. It was a good call. Fourth and 15, they threw it down the field one-on-one. -on -one. Walker had, she was all thumbs. The ball should have been brought down. Again, going back to Mary Towner's arm strength, that ball was thrown off her back leg and still got it down the field, almost hit Walker in stride. On the right side, too, she threw it exactly where she had to. It's up to the receiver to make a play. Seattle's offense again with a short field, this time taking over at the 11. Handoff to the bull. Nobody touching number two as she gets into the end zone. That is the fourth touchdown of the first quarter for the Seattle squad. They are rolling their way out of Colorado right now. Denver's going to need a bigger boat to have a chance to stop Seattle. Nobody touches Stevie Shore. Nobody. One hand right there. This defense is absolutely horrible so far. I mean, if, if you have Dan Green, you cut it off. They may have to cut this defense off. What was Jasmine Davis doing? The cornerback for Denver that was the most half-hearted attempt at a tackle I have ever seen. Now the extra point attempt, toss left. Dominique Malloy cutting to the outside. And that'll be good. Malloy having a great start to the 2017 season there. An average of 13 yards every time she touches the ball. One of the most exciting players in the LFL. She can score any time she touches against anybody. But right now, Denver's defense, man, they're playing terrible. They're playing in three speeds right now. Slow, stop, and wait a minute. Just horrible defense. The offense now trying to mount some kind of momentum. A first and 10 ball at the Denver 15. Handoff, a really delayed, ugly-looking handoff to Amber Smith. And look at Danielle Hawkins body slamming Smith. A loss of five yards for Denver. That's the third time Coach Carlos Bates called the spread option. And she's not a spread option quarterback. It has not worked once. The only thing that almost worked was her throwing the football down the field. This offensive scheme is not built for this personnel. Maybe with Shalane Canfield at quarterback. Certainly not with Towner. And Amber Smith looks lost. Right now, Amber Smith looks like a pure rookie. But you're right, Towner is not a runner. She's a thrower. A bad snap back to Towner, throwing down the field. And through the arms of Isaiah Walker. Walker having a tough time down the field. Isaiah Walker, in a little bit, she's going to become a defensive back. That's how you become a defensive back, by dropping passes like that. That should have been six points. Towner is very upset right now, as any quarterback would be. I think the silver lining might be to Canfield not starting. Denver may have identified a quarterback quarterback they can throw they could they could throw on anybody with that kind of arm but you have to have some kind of system a passing system they don't have it right there two drops by Walker already that Walker drop setting up a third and 15 Towner looking over the middle and Hawkins this may be a safety the league's leading sacker Danielle Hawkins coming off the edge and blowing up Towner That'll do it for us for the first quarter. Seattle up 29 to nothing. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. 
Back to LFL football night. A very generous spot for the Dream. That could have been a safety ball marked down at the one yard line, setting up a fourth and 24. And this time, Denver electing to punt it. That was the quarterback, Mary Towner, sailing it out of bounds. So Seattle still in good position, taking over at the 16-yard line of Denver. Finally, a smart decision by Carlos Bates. There was nothing there, deep in their own territory. Punt the ball out and see if your defense can stop anybody. They haven't made one tackle all night long. Now let's meet Denver's starting defense. Amber Smith, corner. Kelly Roque, corner. Jasmine Davies, safety. Elizabeth DeGroote, safety. Stacy Harmon, linebacker. Starla Smith, defensive end. Mary Towner, defensive end. Mary Towner, she is the most talented player on that defense. She's playing quarterback right now, but she's the only thing this team has going. That becomes an interesting development with Towner starting at quarterback. She also plays defense, not in the best physical condition. So how will that play out as this game goes on? As Seattle's offense takes over at the 16 yard line. That is Randall in motion, faking the handoff to Schnorr, throwing down the seam, just lobbing it up. And a great defensive play. We don't hear that often by Ele Elizabeth DeGrat. DeGrat made a good play, not a good pass at all by KK Matheny. And head coach Chris Michelson, this is why he wants to keep her in the game a little bit develop something between K.K. Matheny and Jade Randall. They're going to need them as the season goes on. Right now, they're not clicking. Jade Randall, one of the more sure-handed receivers in the game. If you get the ball within her zip code, she's going to come down with it. Struggling right now to connect with K.K. Matheny. A second and 10 ball remains at the 16, a wishbone set. Dominique Malloy, and look at that track speed. Touchdown, Seattle. Wow, Dominique Malloy, Tigers do not wait to get tamed. What speed outside? There's nobody out there, but that speed to get in the end zone, it's a wishbone set, a lot of confusion on that defense for Denver. Nobody saw Malloy with the ball, and of course, nobody tried to make a tackle. They haven't made one tackle on defense yet. Seattle lining up now what looks to be for a two-point conversion. That Denver defense, not only are they not great tacklers, but they're going to get winded because their offense has been three and four and out consistently. Absolutely, I think they're playing flag football. They're not getting in close to making a tackle. Nobody's attacking the ball, going after anything. That extra point conver conversion is good. That'll extend Seattle's lead to 36 to nothing. Dominique Malloy showing those flashes of speed. We've seen it throughout her career with the LFL. Malloy starting with the Las Vegas Sin, then signing with Seattle a year ago. A great difference, a thunder and lightning approach to Stevie Schnorr. Just a great running back, fun to watch. It's going to be fun watching her as the season develops. But getting back to Denver, i got to blame it on the coach. I'm sorry to say that, but if you look at Austin, their defense was not good two games ago, and now they're hitting people all over the field. Denver saw what they weren't doing, and they're doing the exact same thing tonight. The Denver offense taking over at the 15. It, it appears, at least, that Mary Tanner will indeed play the remainder of the game for Canfield. Back to passes. Towner looking for Walker again. That was slightly underthrown, almost intercepted by Michelle Angel. Walker got behind his secondary. Kara Williams came up. She got behind her, but she has no hands. Right now, Towner would have better chance of completing a pass to Venus to, to Milo than to Walker. She can't catch anything right now. Venus de Milo, in case you're not aware, is a statue without arms. Now, I cheated a little bit. I Googled that as you were saying it. <laughs> I had no idea of the Venus de Milo statue. Walker has the speed to get open, but her hand-eye coordination is not there. That should be three completions for Towner. Towner not really showing a lot of frustration. I like what I see in her in terms of her ball down the field. We'll see if they can work underneath. A second and 10 play throwing underneath and complete. That is complete to Shalin Canfield, who we talked about being the starting quarterback. This is very odd to me. She's not comfortable starting a quarterback. We see her playing receiver. It might be a good move by Carlos Bates because obviously Towner has a solid arm. Canfield's a great athlete. She makes a great catch in traffic. Maybe that's the combination they need. 
The interesting development, though, is the report we got was Shalene Canfield was not comfortable playing quarterback, hence the change to Towner. Towner looking back to throw, and that is intercepted again by Michelle Angel. That is her second interception of the half, and she could have had three. That is the way to play safety. She lured Towner to throw it deep. Look at it go straight back, watch her eyes, then breaks on the ball, makes a great play. I'll tell you what, Michelle Angel is having a whale of a game tonight. That should have been her third interception. Danielle Hawkins with a block in the back. It won't matter much as Seattle taking over at the 24-yard line. And now Angel spells KK Matheny at quarterback. Michelle Angel had a great year last year in Dallas. She is one of the main reasons that Jade Randall became the league MVP. She's a solid quarterback that can start for any team in the LFL. The problem here is that KK Matheny is a championship quarterback in front of her. You talked about it, great numbers on Angel in 2016. That's what led to her being signed by Seattle. Now throwing down the field and connecting. That was her target in Dallas last year, Jade Randall. We talked about Randall struggling to connect with Matheny, not the case with Angel. Jade Randall, look at those stats right there. Three touchdowns already, what a receiver. First play in with Michelle Angel. They mesh together a lot better than KK right now because they played together for a year. From the shotgun, Angel buying time and finding LaShonda Fowler. And quietly, Fowler is having an amazing first half. Touchdown, Seattle. Great tight ends know how to find the opening underneath within the linebackers. They settle in an area, and Michelle Angel is one of the best quarterbacks at moving her feet and great time in the pocket. She found Fowler for a touchdown. Great play. We should see Angel the rest of the way is the report we're getting from the Seattle bench. KK Matheny not risking injury in this game. The extra point attempt. Angel rolling right and finding Katie Whelan. That'll be good. Seattle ups its lead to 43 to nothing. Coach Michelson was worried about going against a defense like Denver's. He doesn't want his team to get too confident because they got some big games coming up against some big teams. Right now, Denver's defense is just absolutely horrible, so he doesn't want to think this is going to happen every game. That is an excellent point because Denver's playing Seattle and Chicago all season. Chicago posted 93 points in the last time these two danced. Seattle posted 106. I don't know how much comfort you can take in that playing the Denver Dream. Well, he's scared, and he told me he doesn't want to play Los Angeles and get punched in the face, and then his team's shocked, you know, what's going on. You have to be confident, but it's not going to be like this every game. Jade Randall looks like she's been shot out of a cannon the entire first half. A great open field tackle on Amber Smith, limiting Smith to two yards. She is showing everybody in Denver, Colorado, why she was the league MVP last year. What a time to be coming on this time of the season. Now a second and eight ball at the Denver 19-yard line. Make that the 17. Towner in the shotgun, not comfortable under center. Trying to evade the rush and by time, not looking like Michelle Angel, but using some of that weight to bulldoze Jessica Hopkins. Wow, that was like a tank running over Hopkins, but she has time. This is why she's not an established quarterback. Look at the time. You step up in the pocket. You don't have to run. You just keep looking for receivers. She's a tank. Jessica Hopkins said, wow, what the hell just hit me? You do not want to see Mary Towner coming downfield. If you're a corner or a safety for Seattle, Towner coming in at 5'5", 165 pounds. It's kind of like a bowling ball. It is like a bowling ball, but that offensive line, that last play, they gave her some time. Lindsey Fields, Stacey Harmon, they're doing a good job up front. Towner throwing over the middle, intercepted again. This time by Jessica Hopkins. Another pick six. Touchdown, Seattle. One of the LFL all-time greats. She is a ball hawk. We said that for years. Watch her go after the ball. Ball's up in the air, she knows where it is, she goes right after it, and she takes it in for a six. What a great athlete. She reminds me a lot of how Lauren Ziegler is in Atlanta. You can put her wherever you want, defensive back, just great athletes. If you're counting, that is now three interceptions thrown in the first half by Mary Towner. 
Mary Tanner got picked three times, but I'm telling you, there's some talent there. She's not used to, she didn't expect to start tonight. She got thrown into the fire. Her, she'll be okay. The extra point attempt now by Michelle Angel in Seattle, wide open. Stevie Schnorr just sitting in the flat. The Bull extends Seattle's lead to 50 to nothing. This is embarrassing right here. Nobody went out at all to cover Schnorr. Michelle Angel just looked there, she's wide open. The defense, it's looking like they're not even, there's Carlos Bates, I hate to say it, but it doesn't look like they're doing any coaching on the defensive side. They don't know who to cover, they can't tackle. They haven't made one tackle the entire first half. Just sad football. They would be better off using a style of defense you used in 2009 when you were coaching the Miami Caliente, which you encouraged your defense to just get off the field, literally walk off the field. So we could score, exactly, willing the ball back. The problem is, for Denver, they don't have the offense you did in 2009. We would run with anybody, but Carlos Bates is an old defensive player at Georgia. You would think he'd teach these girls at least how to tackle. And look at this, stop the presses. Amber Smith breaking off an eight yard run. Amber Smith, we heard a lot about her coming into this game. That's great for her confidence, great for the offensive line confidence. Let's see if they can get a consistent drive and get some points on the board. A very manageable second and two versus what this offense has been facing all of the first half. Towner back to pass, a crossing pattern deflected and intercepted again. This time by Jessica Hopkins, that is her second one in two possessions. Jessica Hopkins, here we go again. She has great ball skill, that means she can catch it, she has awareness, she sees it, she makes a play on a, on a deflected ball, just a great defensive player. Hopkins, this could be her final season in Seattle. The block in the back on Christine Cortez, but not taking away from Jessica Hopkins. Sure, it's against the Denver Dream. There's a look at Cortez, a rookie signing for Seattle. But Hopkins playing big time football here in the first half. I don't think she'll ever retire. That is Michelle Angel. That was Cortez on a go pattern. That pass had no shot, deflected by Amber Smith. This should bring us down to the two minute warning in Denver, Colorado. It has been an absolute nightmare for the Denver Dream as they trail this one 50 to nothing. Back for the final two minutes of the first half in a game that Denver is down 50 to nothing. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Hugo on the call. Their first two games, they let up an average of 100 points. Well, they're on track to do that again, but you can't win any games, write this down, if you give up 100 points a game. You can if you're the Golden State Warriors and you're playing in the NBA, but certainly not in the LFL. A second and 10 ball at the 14, going down the field, Angel. A great deflection by Alyssa Stongle. Pass intended for Jade Randall. You have to like the swag on Stongle. She makes one play, the only play they've made all night, and she shot birds back at the Seattle offense. They're down 50 to nothing. A third and 10, a bold move by Stongle. Maybe she thinks there's a comeback. I like her swag, but we'll see. This Denver crowd trying to give their defense some life. As Seattle has not faced a third and 10 all half. Facing it here back at their own 14 yard line, a split back set. Handoff, Schnorr breaking through the first arm tackle into the third layer of the defense. And a great block by Jade Randall as Stevie Schnorr scores another touchdown. What a run by Stevie Schnorr, but watch this. This is why Jade Randall is the MVP. She makes two blocks on this play. Her first block is outside. She comes off of that one, comes down. Watch this. She levels the secondary of Denver. Two blocks on the same play. That's how you become MVP. Watch her again. She flattens the safety right here. Comes off one block, hits the corner door. Bam! Get out of here. What a play. The Harvard grad, Jade Randall, balling tonight. Now the extra point attempt from the one yard line. And Angel just spinning her way into the end zone. That'll extend Seattle's lead to 57 to nothing. 
head coach Chris Michelson, he said he'd rather be playing a better team, but he can't control the schedule. So he has his players playing at a million percent tonight, just like Randall and Storr. They might score another 100 tonight, but he wants to get this team ready for games later on this season. That is absolutely right. With Chicago and Seattle, you can't fault them with having Denver on their schedule twice because that's just a schedule. You play whoever you line up across, and you don't take your foot off the pedal, and we're seeing that from Seattle. They are definitely not taking their foot off the pedal. And they're letting their second quarterback play. Michelle Angel's getting a quality time tonight to learn that Seattle offense. First and 10, ball at the 15. Towner trying to run up the middle. Will manage only a yard, another tackle for Jade Randall. I think the one thing head coach Carlos Bates has learned so far is that his team is better throwing the ball than running the ball. They're dropping back right now, letting Towner throw it. They stopped the clock here. The clock should have been running. That is head referee Tony Bates. That was an official timeout for injury. Second down. Well, that explains that. It'll set up a second and nine ball at the Denver 16. Second down, nine yards to go from the 16 yard line. How about Jade Randall? I think I'm ready to sign up for that fan club. She's had quite the first half. And all we talked about all year and all this year is her being an offensive weapon. She is unbelievable at wide receiver, but on the defensive side, she's just as good. A second and nine going down the field to Walker. Under throwing Walker, that was Kiara Williams in coverage. This is why a lot of all world track stars cannot play wide receiver. They have the speed to get behind coverage, but they have no idea how to adjust to the ball or catch the ball. They tried that in the NFL years ago, bringing these track stars over, and they can't catch. They can get open, though. Now a third and nine. If I'm Denver, I may want to just run the ball and get out of this half, get into the locker room, and regroup. Not a bad idea, but if I know Towner, she wants to put some points on the board. A third and nine crossing pattern. Again intended for Walker. Perhaps they're seeing something in Walker at practice that we are not seeing in the game here. Well, she has hands of stone right now. I mean, she's, has, she's focused drop. She's done every kind of drop you have. She gets open. I'll give her credit for that. She's open all the time, but she hasn't caught one ball. Great throw again by Towner. A fourth and nine here, ball at the 16. So Denver cannot punt even if they wanted to. And still a lot of time remaining for Seattle in that high-powered offense. I'd like to see Towner get the ball in the end zone somehow. There has to be another receiver. Canfield is in there. She's a receiver. But right now, Walker's not getting it done. A fourth and nine for this offense. Towner back to pass. A lot of pressure in the pocket. Now stepping up. That'll be a loss of a yard, and the Seattle offense will take over. I know you're not going to like me saying this, but I really do think Towner has some potential at quarterback. I mean, she, she's raw in there, but she can throw, she can run a little bit. If she got in better shape, like we mentioned, she'd be okay. That's Kiara Williams, who's had blanket coverage on Walker. We're expecting a lot of the rookies on that Seattle roster to get some PT tonight. We've already seen it from Williams as well as Christine Cortez. Coach Chris Michelson mentioned about Williams. She has a lot of talent. Like you said, raw talent. She needs game time action. That's what he's going to do tonight. And then also, he's going to test his coaches. He's going to let his assistant coaches call the defenses and the offenses to give them game time action like a head coach. It looks like Seattle is not taking the foot off the pedal here. Angel in the shotgun. Going to take off with it herself. Has a seam to the outside. And blown up at about the one yard line. Elizabeth DeGrot coming up from the safety position. That's the best hit we've seen all night from Denver. Unfortunately, it was 14 yards down the field. Angel saw the hole, put it in the fifth gear. Looked like she's going in the end zone. DeGrot, bam! Where's that been all night? What a hit by DeGrot. Perhaps they're identifying some football players on this roster tonight. Certainly, they're not going to be contesting for the postseason. So this is all about putting some game film out there and figuring out who you have on this roster. You're right. Hand pick the ones you want for next year and get rid of everybody else. A first and goal touchdown by Michelle Angel. The hits just keep on coming for Seattle. Wow, on both sides of the ball, Michelle Angel, she's certainly getting her wings tonight at quarterback and at defensive back. That extends the Seattle lead to 63 to nothing. 
We didn't expect this one to be a close one, but this has been a disaster for Denver. It's almost like these teams, when they see Denver's defense, they try to score more than the other team, more than Chicago, more than LA. Can I score 70 in one half? And they might tonight. 48 seconds remaining, a quick lob pass again to LaShonda Fowler. You talked about Fowler just finding the opening in the defense. She did there as Seattle extends its lead to 64 to nothing. When you see how open the Seattle receivers are tonight, you gotta wonder if Denver is watching any game film at all, the players and the coaches, because they're not covering anything that Seattle's doing offensively. That could be the case, or it could be they just simply don't have the football smarts and the personnel. And I'll go, that could go back to coaching, obviously. But they just don't have the personnel, I think, to compete in the LFL. That is a handoff to Amber Smith. Smith gaining four yards, an up and down first half for Smith, who was a recent signee. She's a new signee, only played one game, this game tonight. Now, you know, going back on your comment, if you pick out like Towner, you pick out Canfield playing receiver on DeGrod on defense. I mean, there's some talent in there. You got to blame it on the coaches right now for not picking it out already and making something happen and putting in a scheme that works with the talent you have. A second and six handoff again to Amber Smith. This time, Smith picking up five yards. That was Katie Leland and Jade Randall on the tackle. Jade Randall playing all world tonight. She's loving it. I think she's putting on a show for us to show her how good she is at defense. Inside handoff right there. Watch the attack angle by Randall. Bam, what a play. Jade Randall having quite the coming out party here in the first half on both sides of the ball. Seattle posting a record 64 first half points against a Denver team that has been reeling from the first snap. KK Matheny and the tire offense as well as the defense rocking and rolling here in Denver, Colorado. Back with halftime after this. Good job, proud of you guys, all right? Keep pushing. I know it's tough. I, no one wants to see these kind of games, including us. I mean, it's hard, but use it as a learning tool now. And now we've got to make the best of what we can to get better. Back to LFL football night at the Budweiser Event Center here at halftime. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco and what could only be explained as an absolute massacre. The Seattle missed on top 64 to nothing. An ugly one if you're a Denver fan. Ridiculously ugly. I cannot believe the difference between these two teams, the gap. You have one team, eight years in the league, Seattle, they won a championship. And then the expansion franchise, Denver, just looks horrible in the first. Unbelievably bad. They have no identity no personnel. If Vince Lombardi was coaching right now, he couldn't do anything with his team. They kind of remind me of the little Giants and if you ever watch that movie. That is the right movie reference when you're talking about the Denver Dream. I see the resemblance there. And speaking of the Dream, their starting quarterback, Shalin Canfield, did not get the start tonight. We talked about it in the pregame show due to an anxiety attack. Enter Mary Towner, their backup, and she played the part of a backup, throwing multiple interceptions through one half of play. This might shock you, but I think she has potential. Obviously, she has to get in better playing condition, learn the mechanics of quarterback better, but she has a very strong arm. Watch out for her next year. Now, Seattle side of the ball, they posted 64 points. What stood out the most? Again, Jade Randall. She's playing outstanding football on defense, off the edge, all over everybody on offense, one of the best there is. Outstanding first half. Randall was part of a lot of scoring for Seattle. Let's just look at some of the scores. Too many to break down for you. They lit up the Budweiser Event Center scoreboard, mainly on the feet of Dominique Malloy, and certainly Randall getting in the act. Heck, even the defense for Seattle scoring in this one. That brought us to our halftime score of 64 to nothing. Let's take a look at the first half stats. That sometimes can be misleading, not tonight. Seattle simply dominating all across the board, and I'm really shocked the way that Denver just rolled over and played dead, didn't do anything in the first half. We will see if Denver can muster up some dignity and play football in the second half. Buckle up and get ready. The second half kickoff is next. Back to Denver, Colorado, as we look at our two starting quarterbacks' performance in the first half. Michelle Angel, she was rock solid coming on for KK Matheny, two out of four, one touchdown. And for Denver, Mary Towner, she had those big four interceptions. 
Towner really struggling. We like what we saw from her in part with the arm strength, but her decision making, and she did have several drops by Walker. She had three drops by Walker. She looked okay. I mean, bottom line, they're getting beat 64 to nothing. So how good did they look? Kiara Williams will get us underway here in the second half. The first half was an absolute disgrace if you're a Denver Dream fan. That is Williams with a nice kick off the back wall. We will see if Towner comes out or Shalin Canfield for Denver. Amber Smith, the rookie running back, got a lot of touches in the first half. And it looks to be Mary Towner. Interesting because this team was in disarray from the start. We thought Canfield was going to start. Then we hear right before the game, she had a little breakdown, and then Towner was going to start. Then Canfield starts, and then Canfield plays receiver. That's not good going into a football game. A lot of disorder, and again, that's another thing that you can lay at the doorstep of the head coach, Carlos Bates. Fakes to hand off Towner to Amber Smith. Danielle Hawkins not buying it at all. That'll be a loss of a yard. Danielle Hawkins, simply sensational this year. She is number two in the league in sacks, and she's in the top five of every defensive category. Just an outstanding year so far. A second and 11 now after that one yard loss by Towner. Hawkins not talked about, overshadowed a little bit from the Dallas free agent signings of Jade Randall and Michelle Angel. But you can make an argument she's had a bigger impact than both those two. And there she is on cue, tackling Amber Smith for a three yard loss. Danielle Hawkins is not a flashy player. She shines from within. She doesn't need the spotlight, you know, like the quarterback, Michelle Angel, or even a Jade Randall. She just plays the game and doesn't expect the spotlight. Hawkins dates back to the Dallas Desire 2009 season, so has been around the LFL game for quite some time. A third and 14 for the Denver offense. A poor snap back to Towner. Now Towner throwing down the field, intercepted. An ill-advised pass, that is Kiara Williams. We talked about Williams being one of the rookies getting some PT. Jade Randall getting in the face of Mary Towner. This would have been hard for Williams to drop. It was right at her. She was trying to go deep again to Walker. I'm not sure why, because Walker probably wouldn't have caught it anyway. But she brings it back to the house. Just a great athletic play. Not a great catch, because it was well underthrown. They're going to call Williams down at the one-yard line. That is where Seattle's offense will take over. And if you're counting, Mary Towner has now thrown for five interceptions in this game. Not being a quarterback was a bad snap. She should have thrown it away and tried to you know, tee it up again, do another play, but she threw it out there. Nobody even close to where Williams was. Bad play by Towner. Seattle now inserting Stevie Schnorr in at quarterback. So this could be very well a Wildcat set with the ball at the one yard line. I love this set, giving the ball to Schnorr inside the 10-yard line. Schnorr faking the handoff to Malloy, keeping it herself. The running of the Bulls, Stevie Schnorr, another Seattle touchdown. This is poor technique. They have her right there in the backfield for a loss. They just don't know how to tackle. That is Towner trying to drag her down instead of putting her shoulder through her, and she took her right in the end zone. For Towner pulling dual, dual duty, we talked about it in the first half, it's going to be very tough for her to play starting quarterback and then come in defensively and be effective. She made a great play. That defense is the problem. They don't swarm. She got to store at the five-yard line. There was no help from anybody else on defense. Now the extra point attempt, another bad snap to Schnorr. She does recover and convert. That'll extend Seattle's lead to 71 to nothing. C.D. Schnorr, one of the most solid backs. She got five touchdowns already this season. She's getting a lot of work tonight. She's going to need it as the season progresses. This is kind of a glorified scrimmage for Seattle. And that's been the case with anybody lining up against Denver, but more so with Seattle. It's a good opportunity to look at that personnel and see how they're going to match up when they get to a Los Angeles in the playoffs. And if they advance past Los Angeles, I know I'm looking forward here a bit. They could very well face the Chicago Bliss for a third straight year in the Legends Cup. And not that they would necessarily use that set, but they showed it. So now Keith Hack in Chicago has to be prepared for that set, whether they use it or not. A first and 10 for the Denver offense and deflected. 
and almost caught by Stevie Schnorr. That would have been the sixth interception by Towner. I think Stevie Schnorr was shocked that the ball came right at her. I mean, she did have the classic hands like feet because that should have been six. It was an easy catch, boom, take it in. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> Sit down, God damn it. <laughs> you will never see Chris Michelson smiling at any of his players from dropping an interception. Obviously, he can read a scoreboard like you and I. This is the most stress-free game I've ever seen Chris Michelson like this. A poor handoff to Smith, and that is picked up by Danielle Hawkins. And they're going to call that a touchdown. So the nightmare continues for Denver. Watch the lack of urgency. The ball is on the ground. Nobody goes after it from Denver. Not even the running back gives a strong effort. And they walk in. Where's the rest of the team? Do these guys practice? Amber Smith and Mary Towner definitely not on the same page. And that's what led to the fumble and the return by Hawkins. Every team in every league fumbles, but you have to react to the ball, make up for the mistake. Nobody on Denver went after the fumble. That's incredible. Schnorr now back at quarterback. They love her size and knows for the end zone when they get down at the goal line. I love this hit. Now you have to be prepared for Stevie Schnorr getting direct snaps. And that is what's happening here. Now optioning out to Dominique Malloy. The attempt is good. 78 to nothing, Seattle. This defense right now, their face is set on stunned. They don't know what to do. They were not prepared for that play at all. It's straight option, a basic option. Nobody had to pitch back. I'm just shocked how their, their lack of preparation for this game is showing. The football gods do not lie. If you're not preparing, you can't prepare to step out on the national television stage. This will now be the third game that this franchise has been absolutely embarrassed. Carlos Bates and his staff, they get game tapes of everybody every week, and they did, they made like they never saw an option play before. A first and 10 handoff. They keep it on the ground with Smith. And Smith losing it again. That looks to be recovered by number six, Christine Cortez. At some point, Denver, these players have to play for personal pride. I mean, they're getting destroyed, but you have to finish the game. You just can't quit. Cortez from Bothell, Washington. It's good to know that you have that kind of depth on your roster where you can go to a Cortez or a Kiara Williams if you're Seattle. Get that kind of depth, give them the playing time they need. On offense, you're getting Stevie Schnorr in the Wildcat. You're getting a lot of action for your backup quarterback, Michelle Angel. This is a good game for this, these types of players. You could see a little bit of panic there on the faces of the Denver coaches as they are seeing this game completely unravel. This is Michelle Angel just standing in the pocket or outside the pocket, lobbing it up. That is caught. Caught by Nicole Peterson, and that'll be good for a touchdown. This is actually a mistake. If she throws it quick, they have a wheel route going on the backside wide open. She doesn't look till too late. She looks for her roommate, Nicole Peterson. I wonder if they got something going on with that. Just throw it to me, get me a touchdown, and she got it. Wow. Her knee was down. I want a touchdown. She said he called a touchdown. Her knee was down. Okay. Her knee was down. That is Carlos Bates. Denver will challenge this. They're saying the knee was down before she got into the end zone. That is indeed what's going to happen. That's Tony Bates. Let's take another look at this. I like how Angel improvises. Her main target's not open. By some time, throws it up. Should have been broken up by Denver, but they didn't adjust. Looks like, to me, it looks like she's down right there. Should be right before the goal line. Did the knee touch before the ball went over the goal line? No, that angle I think she's in. I think that should be a touchdown. From my perspective, that is a little too close to call. And when that happens, they'll stay with the call on the field, which was obviously ruled a touchdown. I really think she broke it from that back angle because the knee was down. and It, it wasn't a great angle, but I think it broke the plane. And she's a center. Give her a break. How many touches is she going to get in a regular game? This is against the Denver Dream, so obviously 
head coach and offensive coordinator Chris Michelson willing to take a shot with Nicole Peterson. They have to give it to her. Like you said, I, she probably never caught a touchdown pass in her life, and she wasn't even a primetime target. Angel found her. I would give it to her. Now, she was the fourth signee from Dallas. We've talked about Jade Randall, Michelle Angel, and Danielle Hawkins. The fourth signee was the center, Nicole Peterson. You really have to hand it to Coach Chris Michelson. I mean, his team was stacked. They won the championship before. They went to the championship last year, but he still goes out and recruits free agents. Carlos Bates very confident at his challenge and actually smiling. I don't know if I'd be smiling if I'm down 84 to nothing. I've never seen anybody smile being down 84 to nothing. Chris Michelson not even looking at the board as we get the call. After further review, the knee was down before the ball was in the end zone. The ball will be put on the half yard line. First and goal, Seattle. Hey, you'll take any victory if you're Denver. That was a good looking challenge by Carlos Bates. They're not going to give Nicole Peterson the touchdown. Good call by Bates challenging it, but this defense hasn't stopped anything all night. I don't think they're going to stop him from getting to the end zone from one yard out. That'll set up Seattle first and goal at the one yard line. And I got to figure this is Stevie Schnorr territory. Or they could try whatever they want here. If they have new plays they want to try out, they have Angel in the game. Angel from the shotgun. Rolling right, has a receiver. Now throwing across her body. Going back to Nicole Peterson. That's something they probably talked about. Hey, if they don't give you the score, I'm coming back to you. Well, that's probably one reason why she won't go back to Peterson, because that ball should have been caught, but that's probably why she's playing center, too. Nicole Peterson. This is the most I think we've called her name in any LFL game in history and probably ever will. Well, maybe as the season progresses, Coach Michelson, you know, seeing that she's playing this well, will put her more in offensive plays than she's seen this year. Who knows? Michelson's not scared to do anything. A second and goal ball at the one yard line. I seriously doubt Nicole Peterson will be part of any scheme moving forward <laughs> unless they're playing Denver. That is a release play, Shay Norton. Now there's a tight end that's been used quite a bit this year. As Norton scores, Seattle now on top, 84 to nothing. Chris Michelson calling plays for all the players, letting everybody get in the action, but Shay Norton, yeah, she is a rock solid tight end. Angel's looking good at quarterback, I'll tell you what. I know there's no controversy there, but she is a solid quarterback. It's great he has two first string quarterbacks on that roster. I was gonna mention, to hit her in stride outside shoulder like that, and be as accurate as she is. A lot of people think that she's more accurate actually than KK Matheny. That's Jade Randall leaping into the end zone. We've got an 85 to nothing game. Well, that's a good point though. Getting back to Angel. I mean, she's played with Jade Randall more than KK Matheny has and it showed tonight. And then you look at on the other side. Last year they had Bryn Renda, all fantasy receiver who KK Matheny teamed up with for years, and now it's a new receiver for KK, and she's not as sharp with her. First and 10 as Denver takes over again. They have been a turnover machine from the first quarter. They have got to mount a drive here and have some kind of momentum in this game. Somehow Carlos Bates has to mix it up. Towner's thrown okay, but he needs Amber Smith to run like she did that one eight-yard gain early in the game. Another ugly looking handoff to Smith, trying to get to the outside, ball pops out. And look who recovers, Nicole Peterson. Maybe you're right, maybe Nicole Peterson is gonna factor into this team somehow. Or maybe game MVP, I don't wanna sway anybody, but she's having that kind of second half here. Bobby Huco in the Nicole <laughs> Peterson fan club, labeling her the game MVP, meanwhile Randall, <laughs> may contest that. Yeah, but Randall gets it all the time. When does Nicole get one? It's going to be a great game for her to come out. Maybe we'll see what she does. There's a lot of time left. Amber Smith having one of the worst debuts you'll see. I believe that's her third fumble of the game. She is going to start working for Betty Crocker. Every time she touches it, it's a turnover. A first and 10 handoff. Malloy, look at that. No corner on the right side as Malloy walks into the end zone, extending Seattle's lead to 91 points now. 
I am absolutely shocked at the lack of effort by this defense. They, nobody wants to make a tackle. It's internal. It's, they might have some schemes, which I haven't seen, but that play right there, nobody went after the running back. Zero. Malloy is just what this defense would fear. They have no speed on this defense, nor can they tackle, but especially speed. They've been no match for Dominique Malloy. For everybody. That's the only way they can stop somebody, by them fumbling the football like that. Now that's a concern. We talk about Nicole Peterson. We put her on a pedestal. Let's knock her down a peg. She's had a tough time with the snap tonight. Or is it Stevie Schnorr not handling it right? Well, Stevie Schnorr, it's a first time back there in that position, but they have to have something. Again, this is why Coach Michelson's trying this. They're putting a new thing in there, new scheme. That's the, he's upset. He's not happy right now for the first time all night. Denver will go back to work on offense with under three minutes remaining here in the third quarter, and that clock cannot move fast enough if you're Denver. Eddie Beer. KK Matheny already, I mean, I gotta think, this has gotta been the most relaxed game that Michelson's coached and that Matheny's played in. They are two of the most intense players and coaches in the league, and they are having so much fun tonight. Just relaxed, enjoying the game. Meanwhile, Towner going down for a four-yard loss as the pocket collapsed around her. Carlos Bates has no offensive scheme. He keeps trying that spread option, and it's been fumbled the last couple times. Hasn't gained one yard all night, but he keeps going back to the same place. The only plays that have any success are Towner throwing the ball down the field. That loss setting up a second and 14. Ball backed up at the Denver 11. The only success this offense seems to have is that intermediate passing. We'll see if they go back to that. No, this is a handoff. Jasmine Davis. I'm telling you what, Jade Randall has got this offense keyed in. There's absolutely no blocking. They blitzed here. They brought the safety blitz. Randall held it outside. She contained. And what a night she is having. She's absolutely, I've been joking around about Peterson before, but Jade Randall is the MVP of this game tonight. The left tight end, Stephanie Harmon, or make it Stacy Harmon, is completely outmatched by Jade Randall as Randall just ran right around her to tackle Davis for that loss. Carlos Bates, he brought in Davis trying to get a spark at running back, but it doesn't matter who you put in if there's no blocking. A third and 18. Towner back to pass over the middle. Has a receiver. That is Lindsey Fields. And this crowd finally having something to cheer. A 28-yard connection. She throws a good deep ball. Fields gets behind coverage. Big time pressure puts it right on the money. And Fields actually caught the ball, which is unbelievable. Maybe you throw the Fields all the time now. Getting back to a point I made early in the first half, maybe the silver lining for this franchise is that they may have found a franchise quarterback, maybe not franchise quarterback, but at least a starting quarterback with Mary Towner. There's a handful of players you can keep. You're right, Fields right there look great. Coach Michelson cannot be happy about his secondary. They've been getting behind the safeties all night long. A first and 10 ball finally on the Seattle side of the field as Towner drops back to pass into the flat intended for Walker. Kind of threw it at the feet of Walker and we've got a penalty. Early indication this may be a pass interference on Seattle. Tony Bates on the call. Pass interference on Christine Cortez, setting up Denver with a first and goal. As we come to the end of the third, Seattle up 91 to nothing. Back for the final 10 minutes of play here in Denver, Colorado, where the dream trail at 91 to nothing. But they are in business. First and goal at the Seattle six. That is Towner back to pass crossing pattern. I'm not sure if that got to Lindsey Fields. Towner just a little bit late. She was open, but she waited too long, and Schnorr got a finger on it, deflected it. Lindsey Fields putting Denver in business earlier, but dropping that one in the end zone. A second and goal, ball remains at the six yard line. 
Mary Towner in the offense with an empty back set. That is Shea Norton off the edge. And Towner taking off, exploding into Kiara Williams. Williams not impressed by the 165-pound Towner. I don't think that was a design play. Watch the offensive line. They're setting up the pass block. Towner on her own goes outside with nobody blocking for the run. Just a bad decision by Towner. I think you got to get something going, and maybe Towner saw an opening. She trusts in her feet. This is a quarterback that if she got into better football shape, could make an impact in this league. She can. If she studies the position, gets in a little better shape, she has the skills. A third and goal, Towner across the middle. And that is intercepted again. That is the sixth interception thrown by Towner. This time right to Stevie Schnorr. That's just lack of experience at quarterback. You don't make this throw. There's nothing there to throw it away. She throws it right to Schnorr. There's no chance that Denver's going to come up with that ball, and they turn it over again. Now, you're the quarterback in the broadcast booth, but for me, it looked like, one, she was eyeing down the receiver, and she never saw Schnorr at the linebacker position. Well, that's it. You have to see that. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage like that, but you see there's, there's no way to throw the football. She throws it underneath. Her receiver didn't have a chance. If you're going to throw that ball, you have to throw it high to the back of the end zone. Now, is Seattle the most loaded roster in the LFL with two-way players? When you think of someone like Michelle Angel, Jade Randall, Stevie Schnorr, Danielle Hawkins, I mean, the list goes on. Can you name another team that has as many two-way players? I think they would be at the top of the list, and then Chicago right behind them. A first and 10 handoff, Dominique Malloy breaking through the first arm tackle. But that is the backup quarterback, Mary Towner, also playing a bit of safety. Towner's really the only pure football player on this roster. If there is a game MVP for Denver, it is absolutely Towner because she's, I, she got picked off a lot, granted, but she's playing with her heart tonight. Look at Stevie Schnorr throwing it down the field to Jessica Hopkins. When did you ever think that Stevie Schnorr would be in the pocket, much less throwing it down the field? I love it. Coach Michelson always has a rhyme and a reason. Now every team has to prepare for Schnorr throwing the football now. A third and six handoff to Christine Cortez. A lot of names you will not hear if Seattle's lined up against anybody but Denver. It is absolutely a glorified scrimmage, but you get action for young players. They get reps. This is a great time of the game for them. A seven-yard carry by Christine Cortez. Cortez has been very prominent in this game on both sides of the field. Schnorr remains in at quarterback. Good-looking pass in the flat to Danielle Hawkins. An eight-yard connection to Hawkins. Wow. If they leave Schnorr throwing the ball like that, I don't want to say K.K. McThaney should be watching out, but Schnorr looks pretty damn good. A second and two ball at the Seattle 23. Ugly looking handoff. I don't know if this was a design play, but a duck. Stevie Schnorr intended for Nicole Peterson. Stevie Schnorr, she has those uh, Tim Tebow type qualities in the backfield. There's a reason they call her the emergency quarterback. You know, you've got KK Matheny. I tell you what, Cortez is getting a lot of TV time here. If nothing else, her, if her family's watching, she's going to get her face on television a lot. I like her. She's got a lot of spunk, a lot of personality, and she's getting a lot of airtime. That was a five-yard holding call on Seattle, so a second and seven. They've had enough of Schnorr at quarterback. They put Michelle Angel right back in. Angel the backup to KK Matheny. We've talked about her. A lot of people coming into this season thought that Angel could potentially contest Matheny for that starting spot as Christine Cortez just barrels her way into the end zone. I mean, this is getting ugly. This defense, not even arguably, this is the worst defense I've seen in the LFL. This is a Cinderella defense. They run away from the ball, just like Cinderella did. Nobody got close to Cortez. Nobody wants to tackle. Nobody literally wants to play football. Look at this. They're getting plowed down the field. There's no defenders at all. There's one that doesn't make a tackle. 
You know, when you put these antidotes out there, like Cinderella and the others, and you've been doing them for years, I know you're always going to bring it home. And man, you brought it home. Running away from the ball, Cinderella. I was like, where's he going with this one? And you brought <laughs> it home. It's true. Nobody, they're going away from the ball, not towards it. Now the extra point attempt. Ball at the one yard line. So this will be a one point attempt to Kiara Williams. Alyssa Stongle and several other defenders had a shot, but as you said, nobody wants to tackle. As Seattle tacks on one more, they're at the 98 mark, and we still have over five minutes remaining. Wow, I was hoping they could keep it under 100, but I don't think they're going to do it. Stongle gets to the ball, had no help, no gang tackling, and again, they get through the defense like it's a piece of paper. Denver will take over first and 10. If nothing else, when you're down 98 to nothing, mount a drive, put something good on game film. Denver still has another matchup remaining, and guess who on the road versus the Chicago Bliss? Chicago probably feels just like Chris Michelson in Seattle. It's like they really don't want to play Denver. It doesn't help them out, but they have to try to use the game as a scrimmage somehow. A first and 10, Towner throwing to the outside. That was intended for Lindsey Fields. Fields, after that 28-yard completion, has dropped the last two passes from Towner. I actually like Fields at receiver. I mean, she gets open, she dropped that one. She looked good on a deep ball, but again, she needs some work in there. Michelle Angel, quite the night at safety with two first-half interceptions, taking one to the house. Just an outstanding game by Michelle Angel on both sides of the ball. Jessica Hopkins, she had a ton of interceptions tonight. On defense, they look rock solid. Another poor snap. This time, Towner finding Fields, and Fields holding on to it. Although a modest gain of three yards. I know it was only three yards, but that was one of their better offensive plays of the night. It was thrown on timing, three-step drop, quick hook wrap, bam, deliver the football. Only three yards, but that's a football play. As much as they've focused on the passing game, I got to figure the coaches have seen something at practice to warrant them going nearly 60 to 70% passing here. A third and seven towner in the pocket, flat footed, intended for Fields, and Fields comes up with another catch. This one good for five yards. There is a lot of positive things about Fields. She came back to the football, made a great catch. Uh, they think they're going to call Seattle on some interference here. They are debating the call here, and Seattle is contesting it. The head referee Tony Bates on the call. Personal foul, hands to the face. Number two of the defense. Stevie Schnorr, that is the nicest. Maybe that's why she's Canadian. You know, when we mic up our U.S. players, they don't, they're not as polite to the referees. That was a very Canadian approach to contesting that call. But it shows what a competitor she is. This game is obviously over 98 to nothing. Even the ref alluded to it, but she goes, hey, make that call early in the game, too, if you're going to do it. That was a six yard loss, a second and 16. Towner from the shotgun, this time a decent looking snap. Down the field, it looked like Walker may have run the wrong pattern, cutting it off, as Towner was expecting her to go into the end zone. She was open deep like early in the game, but you're right, she cut the playoff right underneath and Towner threw it deep. Miscommunication. Third and 16, Carlos Bates has a lot to do here between now and the end of July when they play Chicago. Towner from the shotgun, Smith in the backfield, another drop by Walker. She's going to have nightmares tonight. She's had several opportunities to make an impact tonight and has fallen short every time. Well, you can't play her at receiver if she can't catch the ball. I mean, their impact plays, she dropped. They're touchdowns. That's how you change games. That's how you win games. But if she's not going to catch one ball, you don't throw it to her. Fourth and 16 for this offense. Their final shot to try to get into the end zone. And throwing to the end zone for Walker again. 
Kiara Williams, as much as we've talked about Walker dropping footballs, Williams has done a great job in coverage. Williams had a great night, and this is exactly what Chris Michelson, the head coach, wanted. He wanted Williams to get a lot of time, a lot of coverage, a lot of plays, both sides of the ball, solid effort. Seattle will take over on downs as we've got over two minutes remaining. If you're Denver here defensively, what do you do? I mean, do, do you, you kind of throw the towel in? It feels like they may have already done that. But here's an opportunity again to prove yourself against a very good Seattle offense. I hate to say it, but you want to keep them under 100. You want little goals. Obviously, they're at 98, but you start with little things. Take one inch at a time. Let's make some stops. That should take us to the two-minute warning here in Denver, Colorado. As Seattle was lining up, that was Jessica Hopkins. That will indeed take us to the two-minute warning here at the Budweiser Event Center. Seattle up 98 to nothing. Back for the final two minutes of play, and next week we are headed to Tinseltown as Remy Olenzak in the Pittsburgh Rebellion battle Ashley Salerno in the Los Angeles Temptation. I think that game's going to be a lot better than a lot of people think. They think LA is going to roll, but Pittsburgh's playing good football. Hey, and we get to sleep in our own bed for a change. We're in Los Angeles. This is going to be a fun week. Ashley Salerno back in action starting, and she's ready to go. We talked about Salerno and Kiara Patterson on Los Angeles having that altercation that led to Salerno being benched. It'll be interesting to see if she gets the start next week. This is a handoff to Cortez on a first and 10 play. Finally a tackle in the open field, that time by Walker. We are under two minutes remaining, and if you're Seattle, here comes the big question, the 100-point question. Do you go for it, or do you take a knee here? Knowing Chris Michelson, I think he will go for it. If you give the ball to Cortez, the way she's playing, she's going to try to score. She ain't taking a knee. And you know what? To his defense, he, him being Chris Michelson, they're not, I mean, if they're throwing it in the air, they're getting touchdowns. If they're handing it off, they're scoring touchdowns. There's not much you can do to ease up on this Denver team. Well, there's no defense. There's no tackling. You're right. They might try not to score, but they have to score because there's no tackling. And there's your answer, folks. Jessica Hopkins taking a knee in this Denver crowd for some reason wanting more action as the Boo Birds come out inside the Budweiser Event Center. But that's the right move. You know, posting 100 points may be great on paper, but I mean, there's no, what, what am I looking there's for? There's nothing to gain. There's nothing, you're absolutely right. You don't want to, you know, plowed into them. They're getting beat 98 to nothing. You know what I like though? I like the crowd who stayed. They're down 98 to nothing. Their team's 0-3, giving up 100 a game. Just think if this team won with this crowd. Denver is an incredible football town. They're going to have to figure this out in the offseason. I know they still have a game against Chicago. But if they can get a good product on the field, we know how great of a football town this is. And for Coach Michelson, like he told me before the game, he doesn't want his players getting overconfident. they got to play Austin. They might punch him right in the nose. So they can't think that every team's going to play like Denver did tonight. That's the thing you got to be worried about is a sense of false confidence going up against Denver. But to their credit, they just play who's on their schedule, and they deliver tonight to the tune of 98 points against Denver. K.K. Matheny, the starting quarterback, only played a quarter, but that's good. You don't want to get her hurt coming into the big games. I really like the chemistry that's forming on the Seattle side. And make no doubts about it, Los Angeles, Atlanta, and Chicago, the perennial playoff teams, are watching this Seattle team very closely. They are dangerous. They are very dangerous. With Number one, their quarterback situation is the best in the league. They have two proven starters. They could start either one of them and win football games. That'll do it for us here in Denver. Another nightmare for the dream as they lose this one 98 to nothing behind a high-powered Seattle offense and a relentless defense. For our producer, Brian Petras, my partner, Bobby Huco, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week from Los Angeles.